Yes, 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 yes. What's going on, people? We're back again with another video. And this is a little bit different. It's an upload. So make sure you guys do hit the like on the video if you're enjoying this type of content. This is a combined 11 uh, for the Arsenal-Chelsea game. Or should I say Chelsea-Arsenal game? Because we are at Stamford Bridge. How you doing, Goonie? We got a Chelsea fan in the building. If you guys don't know Goonie, the link to his channel is going to be in the title of the video. But big up to you, Goonie. How you doing, bro? Oh, my man, I'm all good. I'm all good. Thank you for inviting me back on the channel. It's good to be back, man. But I ain't going to lie. I am a little worried about this weekend for obvious reasons. You know what I mean? Nah, I hear it. I hear it. Tell me, man, how you feeling uh, going into this game, knowing that we're about to do a combined 11 right now? You, you might not even get too many players in this combined 11 if, if, it's, if it's up to me, you know. But how are you feeling going into this game, man? <sighs> You know me, ego first and foremost. I always just tell it as it is. I don't just blow smoke for the sake of blowing smoke. Maybe in my score predictions, it might be a bit of ego in there, but I still admit that. But um, I'm honestly, I'm not overly confident. Yes, we've had a good few results before the international break in the Premier League that were desperately needed. But when you contextualize the teams that we were playing, man, and you look at and you look at Arsenal and how well they're doing it's not really a massive indication on how we're going to go into this game. For me, you know, you guys definitely, it kills me to say, at Stamford Bridge, you still are favourites because of where we are in terms of our development, you know, and in terms of literally we're coming back, we're coming off the back of a 12th place finish. We're still not in the best position in the table. We just had a run of favourable games that we should have won and we didn't. We should be in a better league position. So based on those things, Egal, I'm not overly confident, but I'm just hoping this is one of those games where it's just like, it's football. Anything can happen on the day. And this is a derby for me. I, I, I hate losing against you guys. I really do. I hate losing against anyone, but Arsenal, come on, guys, man. You lot have got to switch it on. Have to switch it on for this weekend. Yeah. And you know, what? Uh, um, just before we go into the predictions or anything, let's just quickly get through this combined 11. First, before we go, how many Chelsea players get into your Arsenal Chelsea combined 11? Let me know in the comment section before we get started. And, and for me, the only way we can get started is a goalkeeper. And I only think you could go one of the two Arsenal goalkeepers over 100%. Sanchez. I don't think Sanchez gets in. I get some people want to put Sanchez in because he's been good for you guys, or has he been good for you guys? What do you think? Bro, he's he's had good moments. He's had, In fact, you know what? He's had a couple of good games. I'm not going to be disingenuous. He has had a few good games. But once again, do I trust him based on the amount of games I've seen him play for Chelsea Football Club? Not yet. Not yet. Because I've seen a lot of... I've seen more consistency from... Even Aaron Ramsdale, do you know what I mean? Although Rai is not doing great at the minute, he's just walked into the club, very similar to Sanchez. So I still think he's got a bit of a point to prove. But based on the balance of things between the keepers at their previous clubs, because I think it's a fair comparison, because both keepers have only joined this season. But based on the balance of things, I thought Raya was the better goalkeeper at Brentford than what Sanchez was at Brighton, if I'm completely honest. So... I don't, I, I can't knock you for that, bro. Honestly, I can't knock you for that. Okay, so so first, first, uh, first, we got the goalkeeper. We're going to put David Raya in goal. Now, uh, next, we're going to go the back four. So left back, Zinchenko, right? No question. Or what are you saying? You're trying to put uh, Kowa in there or somebody? Um. Well, Kowa is not a left back. Chilwell is just... He's is very injury pro. I don't know. Are we? Are we? Does the injury situation matter, or is is it a realistic? Is, is Chilwell available? No, he's not. He's not going to be available. Um, so use, so let's give it to fit and available players. So it's got to be Zinni then, isn't it? Because honestly, Kukurella at left back, like I said, he's better at right back, but somehow his natural position is left back. How can you trust that? <laughs> you know I mean, um, we'll save right back for last. Center back pairing. Surely it has to be the two Arsenal boys, Gabriel and Saliba. First of all, Saliba's in, no question on the Saliba, right. Saliba, no question. It's no question. I think you were saying something to me earlier on Lewis's channel. Check that out, guys. We're just on Lewis's channel. You're saying you think Saliba is one of the best. You think he's generational? I've said this is the thing, is and my people watching me who have been watching me for a while shouldn't be surprised. I've said from when this guy was at well, I wasn't on YouTube, but I've told people. 
I've said from when he was at St. Etienne and he was Fofana's partner that this guy is going to be a generational centre-back, 100%. And I believe he is. It's just like when you guys signed him, it broke my heart. It did. It broke my heart because I actually made an effort to tune into St. Etienne games because of him. And then when you lot signed him, man, my heart bled. All right. What about the rest? Um, are you making a case for any of your centre-backs or is it Gabriel? Gabriel, now nah, it's the thing. Gabriel had a good season last season, and even when he was at Lille, I thought he was a, he was decent. Thiago Silva, don't do it. Mm. Does he even start for you this season? He does. He actually does, but he should. But this is the thing. It's a funny one. He's thirty nine years old. He shouldn't be. He shouldn't be playing an entire season or a majority of his season. This guy should be coming in when needed. Do you know what I mean? Towards like feature a lot more towards the tail end of the season. But we're in a situation where we can't do that. But the man is well, quite. Up, uh, Badi Shield, they're not available. So no, no, they're not available. Keep it simple, man. Available. Gabriel. I said Gabriel. Ah, oh, I can't. Can we come back to that? Let's let's come back to that. Otherwise, we're gonna be right, here. Let me day. know in the comment section, guys, if you disagree so far. Um, that last spot. Right, it's Reese James. Come on. Come on. Is Reese James ever even available, bro? He's av he's going to be available for this weekend, apparently. Does so he's, he he's got to go there. Of course he does. He has to start. Here's my case. I put Ben White over Reese James. Best, oh. abil best ability is availability. And but Reese is available. Reece James, Reece James has only been available for 17 games since the start of last season. But, but if we're talking in terms of, you know, I mean, I don't know how we're judging this, but I'm going off ability as well. I just, I just think Reese James, in terms of that, is is the better player. That's not to say Ben White is a bad player. It's not. I just think bro, we haven't seen the best of him since your Champions League final season. I, I can't necessarily, I can't entirely agree with that. I can't really. When has he been fit for a run of games where you could say? He's actually been good. The last time I remember that was when you guys were in the Champions League final. Last season, um, he was mostly injured. Thiago Alcantara has played more games for Liverpool than he's played for you guys since the run of last season. But I'll say with, with him, and this just goes to show how good he is, is Chelsea fans, myself alike, at one point were saying, if Rhys James gets injured, our season is over. Done. And this was even before we had, you know, these this influx of young, inexperienced players coming into the team. So I can't I can't ignore that because he does make us tick. And if we're being honest, if we're having honest conversations here, if he was to be available on the market right now, I think the majority of top teams are going for him like this. I already know that Florentino Perez. Here's my case. Like they're going to ask you to send him on loan because they're not going to trust that he's available all the time. They, well, they can try, but I, I don't think we're going to budge. I don't think we're going to budge. We're going to ask You're for something. You're saying Reese James, non-negotiable. Yeah, for me, it's got to be Reese James. has to be. I think there's 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 been... Trippier's been better than him. Kyle Walker's been better than him. Ben White has been better than him. And, and over the calendar years, you could say even Trent's been better than him. So over the last couple mm -hmm. of years, he hasn't been available. Enough to be I've, better I've, than got, I've got to disagree, man. I've I've got to agree to this. We got to agree to disagree there. But okay. listen, it depends how you touch you, it. I'm willing to give you Reese James. You give me Ben. You give me Gabriel. All right, fair trade, fair trade. Okay. Uh, what are what are we saying for the midfield? Uh, your midfield is is who? De Declan Rice, Thomas Party, and 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 Odegaard. Yeah. Does does Caicedo make a case? I think there's one guy who might make a case. Does Enzo might... make a case? Connor Gallagher? <laughs> no. No, 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 no. As 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 I mean, he's played all right, but but please, 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 I can't, I can't. Right. Edit. <laughs> Let's just keep it simple. Rice is in, no question, right? <laughs> I think there's, I think there's the debate for Rice and Caicedo still. Okay, I what about the Odegaard? Still out. Odegaard has to play. He has to. He's got. He's got. So Martin's in. Let's just get Martin out of the way. So Rice or Caicedo? What are we saying? I, Egal, I you know, Egal, you know, I don't lie. You know, I don't lie, bruv. If I think one's better than the other, I'm saying that's that is better than the other. 
I'm kind of going with Caicedo, you know. I am going. I'm, I'm going to lean with Caicedo a bit here, bruv. I don't know if that's biased, but I am leaning with Caicedo. Let me know in the comment section, guys. Caicedo or Declan Rice? Here's my case. They're both Premier League proven, right? Yeah. They're both hundred million pound midfield signings, and deservedly so. My case for Declan Rice is he started off the season better. Yes, he's coming into a team that's more con con uh, conduitive and like consistent, and he's coming into a better environment. But I believe Declan Rice right now, with the experience that he's had at West Ham and the years that he's played, coming off the back of of, of winning his team at domestic a, a, a European Cup where he's the captain has shown that he can not only perform consistently in, in a league, but also do it in Europe. So based on that, plus the fact that he's been doing it for a longer period, where if I'm not sure, but Caicedo's only really been doing it for two, two years. Two years younger than Declan Rice. So yeah. yeah that's been, so, yeah. And do you know what? Do you know what, Ego? I, I've, I've actually got to be honest here, man, because if it was the other way around, I'd actually say the same thing. Because look, Rice has led West Ham as well to a trophy. You know what I mean? And you can't just discard that. He I was think Rice gets underrated for the fact that he was doing it at West Ham. Now that he's at Arsenal, people are actually realising he's one of the better midfielders in the league. He's a, I, Yeah, you know what? I agree. I have to. I do have to say Declan Rice, man. Because again, the, the European point is a very good point as well. You know what I mean? So There yeah. you go. And then the final spot. Should we give it to Enzo? What are you saying? Enzo's not a number 10, though. Oh, okay, you're doing okay, you're doing a flat midfield. Oh, well, Rice is holding and then you've got the pivot. Yeah, so I'm what going, are you saying? Enzo? Who's 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 the other choices? Um for Arsenal. Enzo, Connor Gallagher. No, no, I mean for Arsenal, for Arsenal. Partey. Partey. Ooh. Enzo. A lot of people say Partey gets in, no question. Enzo for me. Enzo for me. But then I'm looking at it from the standpoint that Rice is already in there. So maybe I'm doing the wrong thing because I'm looking at this for balance. <laughs> but, um, Would Chelsea be a better play team right now if they had Partey in this team? Well, because okay. well, first it? I'll say this is I don't think Partey and Enzo were the same player. I don't think they've got I don't think one off game. Play. You need a player to win your match. Are you putting Enzo on this team or Partey? I'm putting Partey in the team because he's more of a goal threat than Enzo. And goals win your games at the end of the day. I've seen Thomas Partey being deadly from within 25 yards out. He can score right. a screamer. I'm yet to see that from, from Enzo Fernandez. But then it, it just depends what you're looking for. But that's, that's a big point. That's a very big point that you've made there. Oh boy. Because I'm looking at Enzo and I'm saying he doesn't really contribute to you guys winning. Mm. But then that 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 I think that's also come down to the manager too, because you're playing a deep line playmaker in the number 10 position. Yeah, and, and that to me, I'm not a fan of that. You're massively misprofiling the player. Are we gonna put Parte? I'm gonna stick with Enzo. I'm gonna go with Enzo. No, I might give them to you because I don't know how many more players you're gonna get, but I think it's massively the destroyed. the attack. The attack is basically Arsenal anyway. Let's let's just yeah. have it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Sack yeah. in. Does anyone, does anyone get a case? No, Bro, I think I think Madawake is a poor signing by you guys personally. I I think it's too early to tell, but I agree with you in terms of do I think he's gonna take us to the promised land? Nah, no, 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 no. He's not that player that is Jesus? that decisive to do that. Jackson, he's not good it's enough. Broke. Put Jesus there, man. Put Jesus there. Jackson's Jackson not, not striking for me. He's not Jackson's striking. For not, me. Jackson's not ready yet to be leading the line at, at a top club like Chelsea. Martinelli, yeah. eyes closed on that left wing. You know what? To to think we were signing Mudrick to to bench Martinelli at the time. Ridiculous, ridiculous. But yeah, so this is the team. I think that's pretty fair. Unfortunately, only two Chelsea players for you. Really yeah. and truly, I tried to put all Arsenal players. I, uh, you got two in. I think that's a, that's a good result for you. I think it... That, do you know what? Again, like, we, I said this on Lewis's stream because I know people might... Chelsea fans might be saying, oh, you're so negative about your club. No, I'm just, I'm just being honest. 
I'm just being honest. Where Arsenal are, the performances that you guys put in as well. And we're not just talking a one-off run of games. We're talking about, you know, an entire season before this. You've also started the season well. And you've just beaten the treble winners as well. So, you know, I think it's more than fair. I think it's more than fair. Finally, score prediction before we go. Again, okay, this one here, people, I'm going to be biased because it's like I always say, I can never, ever let those words come out of my mouth that Arsenal are going to beat us. So I'm going to be optimistic and say Chelsea 2, Arsenal 1, and we're going to start us. That's where our season's going to start for our good run of games. Positive thinking only. There you go. I'm going to uh, I'm gonna give you guys my score prediction on the actual match preview later today with Carefree, uh, Carefree Lewis and Ziad. And of course, Gunnar Souls at 7 o'clock. As you guys already know, this has been Eagle Talks Football. Big up to you, my guy, for coming on. Really do yeah, appreciate, man, appreciate it. It is late it, right now. Have yourselves a wonderful day, guys. And we're out of here, people. Love for the Southgate love. Southgate out.